everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this $10 Goodwill thrifted ugly old floral pitcher skate into this. So I'm working on this home renovation and you know what? A framed bathroom mirror can be very expensive. Just to add a frame to a builder grade mirror could cost me $75, $80. That's before even buying the hardware to mount it. That's another $20. So depending on the size of your mirror, you can really luck out and possibly find a ready frame mirror. I wasn't so lucky and I've been looking for weeks. So I stopped at the Goodwill. I got an oversized old picture frame. I'm gonna paint this to match my vanity lighting and all the hardware in my bathroom and it's gonna go up and just look beautiful. Follow along and learn how this frugal project can save you a lot of money and give you a lot of pride in what you've accomplished. So the first thing I had to do was remove the picture frames, mounting hardware and the paper backing. Now this is all stapled in and you can choose to save the staples or not. I will tell you, I prefer to use the construction adhesive over the nails because these little nails aren't very heavy duty and that construction adhesive is what is used by builders to hang most mirrors, because that's what most construction builders use in mounting any mirrors in any construction build with just a couple of mirror clips. Now this is a really good way to save an old mirror. My bathroom mirror has a little bit of etching from the mirror glazing on the back missing. It always happens around the sink area. You're not gonna need your picture glass or your matting on the other side, but we're just using the frame. So if you want to, you can leave this stuff right at the Goodwill and re-donate it back to them and they'll find a buyer. As frugal as my family is, one of the kids might find a use for this project. It's really fun to recreate an old painting into something new by adding your own elements to it. Now in general, you'll have about a quarter inch lip around the frame to use for your mirror and for your construction adhesive as the base or the frame for it. You're gonna want a pretty precise measurement. You don't want it over tight that you have to squeeze the mirror in. I measured down the size for my smaller mirror measurement and I'm just gonna cut this on the miter, which is on the angle with a small portable miter box. If you want to be really quick about it, you got to get somebody who's got a sliding compound miter saw to make that cut real precise and real fast for you.
Well, here you can see my picture frame is about four inches too big for my actual mirror. And if you look up close here, I've got a lot of these little chips along the edges. And that's a flaw with the backing on the back of the mirror. Now on the other side, it's quite a bit worse. This frame is going to cover that right up so that I don't have to go buy a new mirror. A lot of trouble with buying a new mirror is trying to get it to fit your space. And I knew my original mirror with a new frame would work out perfectly. I was able to move over my lamp and get that centered finally over my sink. It has been offset for a long, long time. There's another whole video just on that. It's part three of my bathroom renovation. If you need to watch it, I'll try to link it over here in the side. Now you can pick up these French cleats at most hardware stores or home centers. This one is called Hangman and this one holds up to 200 pounds at Home Depot and it was roughly 14 or 16 dollars. I wanted it nice and wide so that I can get this to land in any studs in my wall because drywall anchors alone aren't very strong when you're talking about a large oversized and heavy mirror. So this French cleat can really take a lot of weight. Now in most home building situations, your studs are going to be 16 inches apart or on center they say. So I wanted to make sure this was longer than 16 inches so I can hit a stud on each side. Now I've gone ahead and measured and marked the back of my frame where this corner needs to be because it's going to go out from there to meet this corner. We're going to be disregarding this. Now a lot of people will do this some off of each side. I'm thinking I'm going to just cut it here and get rid of this extra four inches on both sides because I think that's going to be a lot simpler. Then I'm only making two cuts instead of three or four trying to get it lined up just right. The other thing you can do is take your pencil or take a Sharpie and find the corner of your mirror or any picture that you want to have resized and mark it there just on that lip. Okay, so for my frame, the corners are set with these little frame fasteners. Now you can reinforce your frames at the corners with these L brackets. This is an ornate frame or it's got a raised molding or a frame right around the edge, see how that is all textured. On a smooth front frame, a lot of times people are taking like actual hardware brackets and putting them in the corners to get like a farmhouse or an industrial look. And a neat way to have those aged besides spray painting them is to let them soak for a day or two in vinegar. Then they get that aged patina or rusted look already to them. Or you can take a sander to them just to scuff them a little bit or just straight sandpaper because that is a nice way to finish out your corners. Now on this particular frame, um, it was really hard to get this cut just on, just on my miter box. And I didn't want to bust up my corners. So I actually took it out to the garage and cut it with the miter saw that is the power miter saw, which made it a lot easier and I just made my marks. So this is my frame all put back together and you know there's lots of information on power tools and cutting but i'm not an expert at that so i didn't really want to include that as well but i was able to save my corner pieces and you can see here if i hold it up close there's these little l-shaped brackets and they're almost like a razor blade sharp and they're just tapped down in there with a special probably a pneumatic nailer so I was able to take my original, and when I took it apart, the one bent, so I only had one at each corner, so I put them back in, and I glued my corners also. You can tighten this up with framing clamps. Um, I did use my pneumatic uh, brad nailer or stapler to get extra securing force here at the corners. Now, because it is a heavy mirror, I decided I'm gonna take quarter inch or eighth inch underlayment and once my frame, once my mirror is set in the frame, I'm going to put that over the back and nail it to the edges, which is going to give me a lot of extra support, but you can take those metal corner brackets and put them right here if you don't want to have anything. Now, like I was talking about the staples being pulled out, it's just not enough. For a window, they use what's called glazing points, which is a really excellent way um, because this is a com 
because this is a composite material, tapping those little glazing points into here is probably going to give me a lot of trouble. <laughs> so I didn't want to break my frame. I figured quarter inch underlayment is a good way to go. So I'm going to go ahead and measure about a half inch extra all the way around for my underlayment. And we're going to mock this up on our mirror to see what we need because I'm going to be making a trip to the hardware store today for some more items. Okay, so you can lay this out on the floor and set your mirror down into it. I find it's really easy to just prop it against the wall. And if you are doing your final fitting, I'm just doing my first dry fitting. So I find it's really best just to lean this up against the wall instead of on the floor because it'll help protect your frame face. And we're just gonna set this in for a quick dry fitting to see how we did with our measurements. Oh, perfect. So I've got a little bit of space. You want to center it the best you can, but we definitely fit. And I've probably got, you know, if, if I center it, I've probably got an eighth of an inch all the way around, which is just perfect. Because you don't want it too tight because especially being, I'm gonna put this in the bathroom, I could have expansion and contraction with moisture also. So you don't want it to bind and pinch the mirror either. So, for a final fitting, if you had a good wood frame instead of composite, you could just add your glazing points and maybe a little bit of construction adhesive around the edges, or you could just put it right on the edge of the mirror. Um, I would say it's best to probably put it on the frame if you're gonna use the construction adhesive. So because this is composite, after I thought about it, I'm not gonna use that construction adhesive like I was thinking. I'm just gonna use that quarter inch or eighth inch underlayment underneath. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get that a half inch bigger, bend my mirror all the way around. So to go where I'm gonna to wanna to go, at least 25 wide and if I went all the way to the edge I can go up to 28 so they sell them in sheets we are just going to get this based on the best that we can without having to buy a full sheet they have what's called project sheets so that you don't have to take the full sheet which is really good for these small projects now if you're going to get into a lot of mirror making this way or framing Home Depot has a big like panel cutter and I think it's up to six cuts they'll do for you on that machine. So you can buy a big board and have them cut it down into smaller, more manageable sections. If you know some of your measurements ahead of time, it's a good way to go. So here I can probably go up to about 38. So that's pretty good. So if I do, um, you know, 25 by 38, that'll give me good coverage on the back. But that being said, um, you know, I've got a quarter of an inch inset on this frame and you don't want that mirror flopping around once you get that in there. So, you know, the glazing points are a good idea, even if it's just a couple of staples or take the original cardboard and matting and stick it behind the mirror to help fill in that space. Okay, do you remember when I was at the beginning taking the staples out and said that we like to be frugal and we'd find a use? Well, guess what? That's just about the right size, so I cut it down. That's the cardboard backing from the original picture. And to double it up, this is going to give us exactly what we need here. So now doubled up, that gives me exactly the thickness I need to keep that mirror where it needs to be. And we'll just add that underlayment or Luan right over the backing. Okay, so I made a run to Home Depot and I got the supplies I needed. Guess what? Underlayment for a two by four sheet was $6.99. You can get a whole sheet for about $14, so that's a good way to go. It was late in the day, a lot of senior citizens working, and nobody was there to be able to run the saw to make them into smaller cuts. I'm driving around in a car, so I needed a small cut. 
hardy board is this real shiny smooth stuff that they put on backs of furniture a lot of times and the other side is real rough a two by four sheet of this was only about three dollars three and a half dollars so I didn't get to get as big a size as I wanted but I'm covering the back and, and still being able to overlay so I've got my 18 gauge brad nailer and I picked this up for another project that I'm working on with my kitchen cabinets and this was roughly $29 I think so if you're going to do lots of finished projects putting up putting up trim or putting trim on your kitchen cabinetry this is a better way to go than using a stapler because it really drives them in nice and deep it's called a pneumatic nailer so we're going to go ahead we're going to go around the edges and tack this down and then we are ready to hang on our french cleat and put it on the wall All right, so there was a little trouble with my mirror and I had to start over again. My nailer with my air compressor here at this house would not go. I took it back home to my farm. I was holding all the pieces all together as one and the mirror slipped out between and cracked the corner and ran a crack that was visible, but it's salvageable. You can use a glass cutter and cut that edge off or you could take it to the hardware store and they'll cut it for you and you can start all over again. So it's not a total loss. If that happens, don't waste it. So now we've got frame number two, and the good thing is this is actually about six inches larger, and it's what I was originally looking for anyway, and it was $10 at a yard sale. So, super heavy. You wanna make sure you're getting into studs in the wall. So what I'm using here on the back of the mirror is called a French cleat. This is the absolute best and strongest hanging system that you can have. And it just takes a little time to get it put on. You can pick these up at your hardware store. They don't actually call them French cleats at Home Depot. I think it called it heavyweight picture framer. So the one that I have is uh, 200 pounds and it barely goes between my studs. And I wanted to get one that was long enough and we were thinking 16 inches. It looks like we're about 18 inches on center. Now I had this wall mostly open and I should have paid a little better attention. Yeah, we're at about 18 inches on center. So you want to use your larger holes and I've already leveled this out, but to begin with, I'm just going to go ahead and start my screws and I'll make sure it's nice and level before I set them tight. Now I'm drilling uh, my screws, I started a small pilot through the drywall and we're going right into the stud. The nice thing about this hanging system is it comes with its own little level that sits on this ledge. Of course, that was two days ago and I moved things around and well, I don't know where it's at right now. Not to worry though, I always have a backup level. So these spiral screws really dig in and bite into the wood. So it's not gonna fall, it's not gonna go anywhere. And you can see I've got some holes here before. I left my mirror anchors from the previous wall mounting um, brackets from the mirror just in case I wasn't finding the mirror I was looking for. All right, we are right on level. I can go ahead and tighten these up. Now, I like to always hand tighten things also because then you know you're not going too far or you're not going to, you know, cause damage. And with a screw, sometimes it can be hard to tell if you are in. So my last little twist there, I could tell I was starting to bite into the drywall layer. And I don't want that. All right, that is on there nice and tight. So for safety, it might be a good idea if you are a small person or not very strong, because I know lifting something wide can be hard. But we've got to get this up onto the French cleat. 
Now, I wasn't able to center this because of the length of it, but the mirror will be centered on it. We'll just be able to adjust it slightly over to the side. No problem at all. So again, I painted this to match. It's the same finish that we put on the light. And look at that. It just sits right there. Isn't that terrific? So I taped this all off so that I could do the painting. This is a big reveal. Now this is just some tissue paper that I had on hand from a tile job that I was doing. And I thought that that was probably the best way for me to be able to protect the mirror with what I had on hand. And the spray paint really goes on well because a lot of them have uh, primers right in them. So not all DIYs go as planned and you know, not everything goes without hiccups. This was a challenge, but it was a challenge that I was willing to take. And I still saved a ton of money with the frame that I bought on the last one and with this. So I'm super happy with the way it turned out. I already had the paint on hand, so I can't really count that into our total for the project. I would guess the French cleat was $15 or $20. Total in all, I think I spent about $18 between the mirror and everything. So I think that I need to move this over just slightly, but it's looking pretty good. And the nice thing is about going up to a larger mirror, I didn't have to worry about my wall anchors because I left those as is before I painted because I was undecided. So this turned out really well. I hope it helps you a lot with your DIY project and your next renovation that you may be tackling. Thanks for watching everybody. Remember to hit that thumbs up button and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.